Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hut, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, uh, the people's champion, uh, your host of Hut, and welcome back to the Baseball Hut. Hopefully you like this video and hit that subscribe button. So we had a very interesting day on Sunday. Got about 10 days left now before we hit the uh, opening day. And uh, now we're reaching basically the end of the line, the end of the road. No more rumors. We're going to get into all facts. And uh, apparently, uh, the Mets owner Steve Cohen was at uh, Mets camp today. And he had some interesting things to say. I'm going to read you really some stuff from SNY.TV. A uh, couple of things about a couple of these games. Uh, after yesterday's game, uh, Mark Vientos was hitting 170. Now, today, there was a big development. He had a big game down in uh, West Palm, I guess. Had a three run home run in the game. Just absolutely just destroyed a baseball. Or oh, it was in St. Lucie, whatever. Completely destroyed a baseball. Um, that's the one thing you're going to get out of him. He will hit for power. Um, but we'll see. It, but then again, he's going to play. The Mets are going to play him. The Mets are going to play Brett Beatty. It's the one good thing that they did is they did not sign um, J.D. Davis. Uh, but he would go from uh, SNY. Uh, Steve Cohen praises Mets pitching prospect development. We're starting to look stacked. We had developed pitching a long time for the first time. It looks like we have depth down there. I'm just going to skip to where he is talking uh, to the press. Uh, now, as you know, I maybe don't remember, uh, when Steve Cohen took the team over, he talked a lot about uh, building a very strong farm system. In the meanwhile, he signed a lot of big free agents, and a lot of people forgot or wanted to forget that he had said this. They all glom onto this three- to five-year plan of winning a championship. But he also said during this first press conference that he wanted to build a very strong farm system. And he's, and we're starting to see it. Mets don't have an elite farm system, but they are building a very uh, uh, good one to where we're going to see everyday players here and pitching that's going to help them. Uh, and he talked about his plan and the Mets' plans here. And this has gone through how many GMs now and how many guys running this the show. We're following a plan, and we've been very clear about our plan, Cohen said. We want to play our younger players and find out what we have, and I fully expect that's the way it's going to go. That's what we talked about this year. Uh, you saw this spring breakout game the other day, and for the first time, I'm excited about what we're building in the farm system. We had developed pitching a long time, and for the first time, it looks like we have some have depth down there. We have six, seven, eight pitchers that could potentially be our next starters, to me, that's exciting because pitching is so freaking expensive in baseball today. I mentioned that because he has spent a lot of money on pitching with Verlander and Scherzer. If we could start building a team where we have some young, fresh blood and then surround it with veteran talent, that's a winning combination. You saw Brandon Sprout. He pitched great. I thought Nolan McLean, that's a new name that, that came, has come up and it's kind of exciting. You've seen talent. We have Christian Scott, and you've got Dominic Hamill. He had a great hand. was one right after another. That's different, and that's something to get excited about. Now, a couple of things. About some of the pitching that we're talking about here. Uh, Brandon Sprout and Nolan McClain last year were drafted by Billy Epler. Uh, Billy Epler's drafts are going to be very much judged now. What he, you know, the result will be, obviously. Uh, not just so much the players he brought in from other teams, but also what he drafted. The Mets were given high praise for the draft last year, uh, and really the last two years. And Nolan McLean and Brandon Spook set the world on fire on Friday because they were thrown so hard, everybody took notice. Now, in this comment, he mentioned Christian Scott and Dominic Hamill. Uh, they were both drafted in the 2021 MLB draft. And they are products of the Zach Scott front office. Zach Scott, we hardly knew you. But he brought in a lot of interesting arms that are just starting to, to come to this bubble up to the surface. Another pitcher that hasn't gotten a lot of talk about, and that's Calvin Ziegler, who might be better than those guys are. And he hasn't pitched much in the minor leagues from the Mets. Uh, he was also a guy drafted out of the, out of the minors uh, those years. But really, we're going to get a good sense of what kind of baseball guys... We had here prior to this sort of all this sort of craziness that happened with Zach Scott and this whole thing with Billy Epler. And, and, and we're going to learn a lot about how they did their jobs uh, over the next few years because these guys are, these pitchers in particular, 
have gone quietly through the farm system without any fanfare. Now McLean and and uh, and uh, Spru, they're going to be uh, having really their first full season. But Scott and Dominic Hamill and Calvin Ziegler, they've gone through the farm system very quietly. Especially Scott. Now, Scott has sort of burst onto the scene, but Hamill's been very kind of quiet. No one talks much about Ziegler. A couple other names in this article, they mentioned uh, Blade Tidwell and Tyler Stewart. They were both drafted in the 2022 draft. Um, but we'll see how they are. Those guys are, cons are very highly regarded. People really love the arms that the Mets are developing. Uh, just to, uh, sorry, I mean, the Mets have a very interesting positional group in terms of prospects. The Mets are very strong at catcher, as you know, and the Mets are very strong uh, in the middle infield. So a lot of the middle infields are probably going to get moved around, maybe move to third base, you know, second base, uh, outfield, and wherever else. But that's the interesting thing about the Met farm system is is everyone talks about their everyday players, but really no one's really talked much about the starting pitching, and now we're starting to see it. So this is uh, this has been a very uh, fun time. I love talking about it. when I was watching the game on Friday. If, if if you've been following this channel and you've been following the prospect that hit the, watch the prospect hut, I'll put the link and go and subscribe to it. I've talked a lot about all these players that we saw on Friday. Now some of them I didn't see because I was working. I got home around an hour into the game. But to see Dominic Hamill, I'm sure a lot of people were excited to see him. I was so excited to see uh, Nolan McLean and to see uh, Brandon Spruce because obviously the Mets drafted him twice. So we've seen some really great pitching. I mean, this is very exciting to see this kind of pitching uh, develop in the Mets farm system. Now, this year, they have the 19th overall pick. Uh, it's too early to tell where they're going to draft. I think at this point, they probably would be best served to draft a college pitcher. At that, at that number. That seems to be the most solid way to go. But we'll see. Uh, this draft is kind of a weird draft. It's not a very deep uh, high school draft. It's actually pretty good with the uh, the college uh, players. But we'll, we'll find out when we get to that point. But the Mets pick 19th overall uh, coming up in the draft in, in July at the All-Star break. But, you know, seeing this pitching, this is part of what the Mets are trying to do. Is build a strong farm system so they're not spending millions and millions of dollars for these old pitchers, and they break down. Cody Sang is another example of that. I mean, he, he pitched a lot of innings, a lot of innings in Japan, and and in the second year he's dealing with an injury. Hopefully, uh, he'll get this little this extra seven to ten days and be ready to, to to get started up again. But you let me know what you think about this video, and of course, uh, we'd love to hear from the from the owner of the Mets. Uh, he comes across as a good guy. I don't care what any of the, the scumbags on Twitter say. And what the assholes at WFAN say from moment to moment, because they're trying to work for Boston Sports and help them out. And of course, this is the greatest Mets fans channel on YouTube today. And thank you for watching. It's not, I'm not joking. We have a lot of fun here. And of course, we're going to have a lot of fun this season. Every season is fun. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. If you can't enjoy baseball, consider all the stuff that our, our world is going through, and there's something really wrong with you. But if you subscribe, you're the best. You're the best. Unbelievable.